Go. Welcome to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Randy Moggins. And as you can see in the screen, I'm not alone. There are people out there, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out there today with Kara St. Louis and Emily Moyer. Hello. Hi. Hey, hey. Yep. That was an energetic uh, intro, wasn't it? That. <laughs> And that's Randy Moggins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so of- we convened here today to talk about, uh, oh, I guess a whole cluster of things that'll probably somehow or another all flow in the end. And uh, obviously, too, also to talk with Kara about uh, your, your current projects that you have going yes. on, which I think maybe we ought to do that at the front end, catch up with okay. Kara. Okay. Tell Let's us a little- do that. Let's start with Patreon. Yeah. Talk, talk about Patreon. My love affair with Patreon grows daily. I absolutely adore that site. And I adore that site for a couple of reasons. First of all, I am in contact, real contact with the people who are my patrons. We talk, we do Zoom rooms. They tell me what they want. They tell me what they don't want. We ask each other how we are. I mean, it's just exactly what you're hoping for okay when you go there i i am um really pleased i'm really pleased with how that's going um the other thing and i i'm just gonna say this but because it's got to be said um most of us in this community spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every year maybe putting stuff together to bring you what we feel like you need to know Um, Maybe half our paycheck sometimes goes to that kind of thing. So, right? Yeah. We do it all the time, dude. And I I have so often bought a one-way ticket someplace to speak with like a load of books under my arms and hope I could get back on my own dime. Okay. So, in the very beginning when people were giving us a bunch of stuff about the fact that we were asking for $1 a month to be a, a patron, to have access to us. They have access to us, one-to-one, and everything that we have. You know, I I just want to say that and be done with it. You're talking to a bunch of people who have put their heart, soul, and everything they own into this um, arena. And I, for one, am extraordinarily grateful to have people who really, 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 really do appreciate what I'm doing and bringing come together as a group on Patreon. Randy and Emily are on now, and I'm, they know I'm super jazzed to see how that translates for them. You know, it's one thing to have me as an individual, but they're, they're coming in sort of as a, a collective, bringing everything that they've, you know, that they've um, manifested so far. So let's be, I mean, let's be glad and happy that it exists out there, because I think it's going to do exactly what it said it was supposed to do. Now, I will say... There's still a little bit of stuff out there. I mean, people who sort of dramatically jump off Facebook and do only Patreon very quickly find out that they've lost sort of a lot of the, of the fodder that we're all in. We have to maintain sort of all of these groups that we're communicating in, but Patreon is special. Patreon is special. So I want to say- Patreon's what, Patreon I think is what I'm thinking is more curated yep. in terms of content. Yeah. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's another level up mm-hmm. because we're, we're all still effectively putting our core material out there for free. I mean, it's going on to YouTube and yeah. Facebook and other social media. Right. So, you know, we're giving, we're giving away the 80% and basically in, a, in, in some way, probably gleaning the 20% into that other group. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. once more selective experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but, but I want to say that. I want to say that as many times as it needs to be said that I know myself, Randy, I'm Emily, I'm sure, <laughs> working like dogs, spending our own money to bring you this stuff. So I appreciate it, and it's working out really nicely. So I want to say that about Patreon. What else, Randy? What should we what do? Else? What else? What else? Okay, schedule? you've got, schedule? 
You got speaking tours coming up, including here in the uh, United States. I do. I do. I have two Fay lectures coming up in the UK. Let me say that really quick. Uh, 16th of October, I will be back up at St. Anne's New Horizons. Do you guys know that venue? Have you seen some of the stuff that comes out of there? I know Sheridan's been there and, um, oh, who's the guy who does AV and fracking? Because I'm a week after him. He's just gotten arrested again. Do you know who I mean? No. He does fracking and AV, alternative view, I think the name, and it'll come to me. You know me. This happens to me. Huh. I have no threshold for embarrassment, so I'm okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. I fall, I don't. <laughs> Ask Randy. <laughs> oh, anyway. And the so uncurated experience with Kara St. Louis. Yeah. yeah, 16th of October. I'll be there. Uh, yeah. it's a, I'm rolling out yet another AI version of the AI lecture, which we're going to talk about later. And then I'm doing the multidimensional conference in Birmingham on the 11th of November. 11 11, folks. And then. Uh, I had to um, the United States. I had to the United States, and my first stop is New Orleans. I've got two lectures and a workshop there. And then on to San Francisco, Petaluma. Hope to see Emily there. Hope very much to see Emily there. Warning Emily that I'm going to be doing some photography and some filming as a perk for my Patreon channel behind the scenes. So if M shows up, you could be sure she's going to end up in some pictures. Um, <laughs> I will, I, so right now it looks like I'll be able to make it. So that would be also, so listeners of uh, Off Planet Radio out there, it would be awesome if you guys join us and we can have a little Off Planet meetup oh, at, Kara's, yeah. at Kara's lecture. So anybody who's, in, <laughs> anybody who's in Northern right. California, come, um, come join in. So That's right. Petaluma, yeah. Ion's Earthrise. It is an exquisite location. I will do it every year. Um, and then from there, I moved to Phoenix, Scottsdale. I've got a lecture and a workshop. Then I've got a lecture with Matt Landman in Sedona. Nice. And nice. Yeah, right. We're going to get Matt on the show. You should. Yeah, he is very, I mean, he's all, he's the all chemtrails channel. And that's great. People need yep. to continue yeah. to carry that. That's what's got to happen. Because as the rest of us, or, or some of us kind of move into different sort of, you know, putting things together, it's, other people will hold down the fort. Well, Matt's as entry as into the whole chemtrail thing is interesting because he kind of came at a time when the uh, geoengineering chemtrail movement needed a fresh voice out there other right. than the opposition controlled. Right, right. I, like, I, like, I like Matt because he reminds me of like the kind of guy you'd meet at like a party like yeah. sitting on the couch, <laughs> having a beer or whatever, and he would start talking to you about this, but he has like a way of speaking mm -hmm. about it. He's likable that mm -hmm. like people who will gather around and listen. He has a, like, he has a quality that he could like hold sort of court at a party yeah. and people listen to him about this and yeah. maybe it'll wake a few people up. So I, I, I appreciate his work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus he's got a movie out, a documentary called Frankenstein's. Yeah. I've yeah. seen it. It's fabulous. You've got to see it really. Um, and then I'll do a workshop in Sedona too the next day, which, you know, those two things are anyway. And then from there I go to Christmas with my kids. And from there, so exciting, I go to, to Niagara Falls and Toronto to do two lectures with Shane the Ruiner Bales on magic. The, um, the lectures are called I Magician, which is also going to be the name of the final book in my trilogy, the Imagination Series, which is why we grabbed it. I just think it's beautiful. I, comma, Magician. Me and Shane and Randy will be there. I, I hope he's working on it. I hope he yep. gets there. Um, Randy, I'm doing behind the scenes filming <laughs> in Toronto <laughs> and also Niagara. Just saying. So I guess, I guess Kara's drafting us for her films right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just warning you that there will be cameras around and you will be on them. But anyway, I'm extraordinarily excited about that. Um, Shane, Shane, it's, I mean, this is his time has come for this kind of stuff. So I am really looking forward to watching him step up and, and yeah. deliver what he's got to deliver. It's going to be phenomenal. Then back here for various things. Um, I've got journeys planned, but I don't really want to talk about those yet, except to say that in June, Maria Wheatley and I are doing a solstice tour to Ireland, and I'm going to be lecturing at every, I'm going to be bringing the Fae in situ at every site. She's going to be doing sacred water at every site. 
it's about a week long and um, I'll do a workshop somewhere along the line there out in the middle of Ireland where it's pertinent very excited about that I don't want to go much further than that because that's already June so yeah so lots of really good things coming up the workshop Randy's giving me an opportunity to say that the workshop is a hugely important thing okay um, our thoughts this is not going to surprise you but our thoughts are not our own and we have many many distractions and many many predators coming in from the outside and we also have dimensions on the inside which is something I want to talk about a little bit because it just should be a discussion I'm um, the mind predators that exist in our deep deep subconscious or you want to call it subconscious I don't know that that's really the correct term for it um, they need to be acknowledged and dealt with and I'm teaching an active uh, organic meditation that actually deals with that and um, it's a, a, I've been doing it online for a few months that's working out nicely it's only a couple of hours at a time the thing that that lacks though is the uh, you know the one-to-one -one community but that means somebody in Australia can take my workshop you know I can only be so many places right and and a lot of people are interested in this so the one that I'm talking about here though on the tour is day long, three hours in the morning, break for lunch, three hours in the afternoon. First we take an, a snapshot of where you are now visually. What is your vision? Is your vision something that has been prescribed for you? Is it your vision? I don't know. People come, they do this, this task, they come back a month later and they realize that they, they have nothing to do with the vision that they thought was theirs. In the meantime, they're building a, a meditation that actually jerks their consciousness, jerks their thoughts back from all the outside interference that's trying to get a hold of them and direct them. I know if you, we, we could talk, we've all, everybody's talked forever about the interference that's on the outside. Mm -hmm. We've all talked about that. The stuff that's on the inside though, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. If, you, if you pay attention for just a few seconds to what in the course of the day to what's going on in your mind it is random it is all over the place it has no coherence it has no it's just everywhere I personally don't believe that that's the human condition I personally don't believe that that's the way it's supposed to be I think that there's stuff in there we talk about the predator we ask ourselves when did no the infection we talk about the infection when did the infection arrive? Where is it? What, uh, how does it manifest itself? I think it may be that kind of thing in an inner dimension with uh, a non-Earth, you know, parasite that we have. We can't see because it's on a different, it's on a, an interestingly different dimension. I know when you try to see things in the etheric, for example, there are things that go on in the etheric. If you actually look at them, you can't see them. If you see them sort of here, out of the corner of your eye, you can see them. But once you turn to look at them, you can't see them. Okay? It's kind of like that. So we're exploring that kind of thing, and I'm giving you something that will help, that will allow you to take your thoughts back. People who have taken this workshop have said it's one of the most important things they've ever learned. So we're going to be doing that all across the country, and I am still doing it on um, computer. Um, I'm a bit concerned about it, though, because I did have – and I'm going to say this because as a kind of a warning, I did have somebody jump on my Patreon and I did offer full access to, there's actually six exercises in the complete organic cycle. I had somebody jump on there, take, I was offering it as a perk for the 25 and over patrons, took it, jumped off, left, split. I mean, I know where he went with it and all that stuff, but what it makes me wonder is, I know where he went with it. He went straight for an AI corner of our um, organ of our community, and so of course AI is going to have a vested interest in dismantling anything that helps you remove the power that they have exerted over you. So use some discernment on that. Okay, maybe just check with me before you take somebody else's class because these things are going to come start coming up now, which was inevitable. You know, it was inevitable. Anyway, so I've said that, <laughs> um, and I, I do want to talk about the alternative community just a little bit, and then I'm going to very dramatically remove my consent from being screwed with by the alternative community uh, anymore. Okay? I'm done. <laughs>
I'm just done. Gonna yeah, like, like it's really all that simple to just well, put that see. notice. It, it is try. part of it. But <laughs> you're gonna, you, need run, a, you need a firewall. Grand, let's run the grand experiment here, Randy. Let's see if, if her announcing her withdrawing her consent that this works. <laughs> and then I'm going to be, part, yes, I want to be part of the, obviously, I am part of the alternative community. But um, one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is because I just saw a really, really good down to earth video put out by Shane Bales. Justin, is it? I keep Spencer. forgetting it. Spencer. 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 I'm sorry, Spencer. It's not you. It's me, baby. It's this. And um, Yvonne Palermo um, on some stuff that had been happening to her and how that goes to the alternative community and how we are with each other, which is not news. We're all been, we've all been talking about this forever. But you know what, gang? It's getting pretty nasty out there. It isn't just one or two of us who have these bizarro experiences and get really upset and get really, I mean, lots of our work can be just brought down, just brought down, come crashing down because of the nature of how people are in groups and how they um, are following these gurus and what amounts to cults and things like that that's going on in our community. Um, and I watched this, this, uh, um, this video the name of her the name of her channel is Dark Brew. Is that correct? Something. Yeah, her podcast is called Dark Brew. Dark yeah. Brew. Dark yeah. Brew. She goes by Groovy Bean. Groovy Bean Dark Brew. Thank yeah. you, Randy. I had not seen anything that she had done. So, um, and she has been terrorized for the last year or so for speaking her mind. I'm freaking tired of this stuff. I am really tired of this stuff. Um, I have taken my share, Randy. Oh, we've all watched Randy get punched around for the last year just for saying what he thought. <laughs> I mean, it's just forever. been beating on him. <laughs> Randy kind of know. likes it, though. Randy is a little bit like bad. He likes it that way. Randy kind of is amazing. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Randy? Some, some things he doesn't enjoy, but like, <laughs> he says he doesn't enjoy it, and then he goes and does another thing that he knows will make it happen again. So. I know. He's a provocateur. <laughs> I know that. But, you know, you know yeah. like, he, he can, he, like, he obviously can handle, can handle it and whatever. And Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is what I just don't, like, the, my whole thing with all of this stuff. I, yeah. Guys, if you don't like something, just fucking turn it off and go right. and watch something else. Right. <laughs> like, like, here's, like, you know, we're, we're all, I mean, like, we don't, they don't even need to infiltrate our, our groups anymore because of the way we, people in our community just like fight over stuff and, and attack. And if you don't agree with everything I say, what, like, it's, that's just like, we, we need to grow up. Like, if you don't like something, turn it off. If you, mm -hmm. if you think like mm -hmm. something is going on that if someone's putting out information that is like wrong or dangerous, just state your opinion once and move on. Don't try and get everybody else involved in it. Don't, tr don't create a whole movement about it, you know, kind of thing. Like state mm -hmm. your opinion about it, you know, state why. Don't certainly, I never call for people's videos to be taken down. Like literally guys, there is no, like I, I, that is like one of my firm stances. I'm a free speech extremist. Like I don't, there's no, unless someone is shouting fire in a crowded building or making, you know, that kind of thing, like, or making, you know, credible violent, violent threats to people. Let people say whatever dumb shit they want. It's part of the, the <laughs> exercise of developing a right? Let right. people say mm -hmm. stuff, whether you believe it or not. You know, you can state your opinion about, you know, if people put out information and you don't like it, you can put out your video about it too. But don't go and try and get people's videos taken down. Don't try and get other groups of people to gang up on them and stalk them. This is just like, this is childish behavior. And as long as we behave like we should be in a playpen, we're going to be in a playpen. Mm -hmm. What what was yeah. what transpired as the backdrop to this particular podcast by Yvonne Palmero is that she was subjected to a massive amount of gang stalking and harassment, mm -hmm. and I suspect real world you know efforts as well. Mm -hmm. And that was at the hands of the Sphere Being Alliance. So, <laughs> of course, you know the very same group that's going around telling everybody how they've got to do this love and light thing are mm -hmm. the people who are pulling the, 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 the gang stop gang stalking operation in the background or not even in the background. I mean, Corey Good's been caught doing it in plain view. Haven't you Corey? 
Yeah, there you go. Didn't he put out messages to people basically saying, well, if enough people make complaints on this video or downvote it, then Facebook, I think they did that to Daniel That's List. That's a dark, dark, yeah, dark, dark journalist. Who, who we don't agree with about everything, but we certainly support his right to put out whatever information he wants. And we do agree with him about some stuff. This idea that like, you know, if people um, are going to like, like your information, they should also be part of your cult and like do all these defensive actions for you. Like, this is gross. Like this is just no different than like, high school bullying and like mm -hmm. gang, gang behavior. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, guys. Stop it. Just stop it. Just stop <laughs> well, that's it. exactly what Shane compares it to. Mm -hmm. you know, basically mm -hmm. high school mentality. A lot it of is. it is. A lot it of is. it is. And I've got, like I, I was just saying, I right now, I mean, I, I, for a month or so, I've had this like renewed effort. First, it was last year with Australia. I'm just sick to death of talking about that. And this year we got some, I got something new going on. It's always something. And some posse has been sent from someone. I mean, we got a couple guesses, but whatever. Um, to, to send me these redonkulous emails to try to get a rise out of me, you know? And at least I can say that in the last year, I learned <laughs> not to play. Yeah. Okay. I'm not playing. And, uh, and this is what I say. Sorry, not working. Sorry, not working. Sorry, not working. Yeah. Okay. So it, I don't know. Anyway, but this is when I say I don't want to play anymore. This is what I mean. You know what I mean? This is what I mean. I, these examples of gang stalking, these examples of ruining people's work, you know, and most of it, if I may say, seems to come from a jealousy standpoint. It seems to come from a standpoint of someone being afraid they're going to, their territory is going to somehow be infringed upon or the limelight that they, they currently hold or, but you know what? I, I'm watching these people and it's almost impossible to watch because they're losing so much face over this. Do you know? It's like, yeah. wow, you have no idea how pathetic you're making yourself look. And yet, as they were saying um, on this video, they have become cults. We've become extremely um, entrained to join in cult-like behavior. And so people follow these people and do whatever they're asked to do, and they don't think about it anymore. So, Well, that is an iteration of the hive mind, the AI. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's AI. Hello. So that's, that's AI. That's exactly what it is. That but people okay. don't realize that they fell, fall into that programming, that they're just right. sequential circuits ticking mm -hmm. away instead of mm -hmm. independent thought and not mm -hmm. getting into this mindset that your, your gang is going to kick somebody else's gang's ass on the internet. Cause. <laughs> right. Right. Hello. <laughs> and you guys, anyway. like, just like, and I suggest this for everybody go like, watch some other videos on YouTube that aren't about any of this stuff. Like, you know, like we do that. too much time in, in this like, like community. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's good to like, one of the things that started happening for me just organically, but I think in some ways it's the healthiest thing is once I started having my face out there and, and doing the show with Randy, I, I watch, I consume way less alternative media information than I, than I, or particularly of our community than I used to. And actually mm -hmm. I've like turned my focus of when I look at YouTube to trying to figure out like, what's going on with the general population. So right. there's a few of them left that we can still pluck and save from that nonsense. So right. I spend, even though I have no interest in politics and I'm totally out of that system, I spend time monitoring, huh, it's interesting. If you really look right now, there are some people on the left starting to wake up. Okay, so I'm yeah. interested in how can we, you know, like start a conversation over there. And I spend a lot more time looking at stuff like that right now than the stuff from in our community. Because if we just do this as, as our thing and also spend all of our time looking at it and whatever, it, it becomes your whole life. And then if, if somebody decides they don't like you and they get the whole group not to like, it, it just becomes a big, you know, like have a diversity of different kinds of information that you kind of spend time looking at. But also, mm -hmm. like, and I think this is a danger in our community, is when we have, when all of our friends are just friends from online, friends that we've only known on Facebook or even just only known through this way, then mm -hmm. when something goes wrong because the internet talks fast, then it feels like your whole life is crashing down. Guys, don't forget about your friends out there, the real friends in real life. Even if they don't have, know anything about what you're talking about, this kind of stuff, they're valuable friends. 
that those are people that are in your real life that don't care what the sphere being alliance thinks of you. They don't give a shit. They don't know what it is. <laughs> if, they, if, if you told them what was going on with this, they'd probably laugh at you. And for good they reason. Would. They would so, so laugh. Keep a good balance. Like I have friends that don't know anything about this. I mean, they, they ask me about it a little bit and some of, some of it they find interesting or humorous, but have friends that have nothing to do with it. Do things with your family. Yes. Go to the museum, go to the baseball game, do, do different kind of stuff. You know, and, and this is, even though for most, most of us, this is the most important part of our life. Like mm -hmm. if it becomes the only part of our life, then, then that's the, like sort of the barrel that they want to fish in where they know how it's easy it is to kind of shoot you all. So right, you know, right. swim, swim in the ocean, not in the barrel, kids, you know? Yes, absolutely. Um, do you know what else I wanted to bring up really quick? Because I was just thinking about it. Um, Randy and Em, you know how we're talking about um, dead ends. We're talking about yeah. we, we talk about stuff. We all kind of then start fleshing it out, and we all kind of start talking about it. And then it becomes extremely apparent that we are all in a cul-de-sac, and yes. there's, no yeah. further, there's no further place to go. Well, I had, I had a really interesting experience with that the other night. I was watching the brilliant, of course, the brilliant Max Egan on um, oh, yeah. Open Mind Conference, yeah? Yeah. And he's probably got 50 amazing things to talk about in his bag of tricks. But for some reason that night, he started talking about social engineering. And I was watching him, and I was thinking, oh, my freaking God, we're all talking about the same thing again. Look at that. You know? So... But when that happens, and it happens to all of us, it's just kind of a, it's an interesting phenomenon, you know? What we need to do is figure out what's under that. Yeah. Now that we're all kind of at the same dead end, what is it that they've steered us into? What is mm -hmm. it they've steered us into? Because most of it will be truth, but we've been steered into something. What's under that? Yeah? Yeah. 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 So I just wanted to mention that because I'm trying to be really, really cognizant of that, about that right now. And I think that once we realize that that happens, it becomes very painfully clear to us when it does happen. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, we're, we've all been steered into this freaking dead end on social engineering, you know? Yeah. So what's under that? Right? Another present from the Tavistock Institute. Every, hey. They send us hey. one every few months, you know? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> little did we know, little did we know, right? They were going to give us the truth, but it was going to take us to dead end after dead end. After well, dead well end. Elisa, Elisa, Elisa E has something she said, both when I talk, speak with her personally, or and she, she's, she mentioned it on shows that, you know, especially in our community, we're dealing with a lot of people who, I mean, our whole world has been mind controlled, but within our community, we're dealing with people who've been subjected to more stringent and, you know, direct forms of this. Yeah. Not only do they have a plan for your programming, for what, to what you do with, but they also have a plan for how you're going to wake up because they know that it's possible that the subjects will wake up. And so it's almost like, just like there are layers to the programming, there's layers to the awakening process. Right. And so we have to, whenever we have a new revelation, a new memory, a new clear, like truth that we discover, we have to look at both sides of it. Like that doesn't mean it's not true, but we have to go, okay, what are the, implications of me knowing this like will it stop me from doing something will it cause me to do something do they want me to do that thing we have to be very aware of um how we how how we take how we deal with information as it comes to us mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. well, this kind of goes into what kara was talking about earlier with all of these voices and yes. having to reintegrate i mean mm -hmm. I, I i did a lot of reading into pds spensky and a lot of what he talked about in terms of all oh, of these different eyes that exist and how these different, this will lead us kind of into, I think, the egregore as well. Yeah. Because we're basically spinning off all these different, they're like threads in a computer. They're throwing out different data streams, basically. And those data streams then spin off and they develop almost like an entire persona under themselves. And you think it's you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, this is why I think that the, the quest of our time, Randy, the quest of our time is to identify who we are, who we are. What is it in all of this that's me, really, authentically me? What's the germ in there that's authentically me? That's where our power lies, you know? That that's what's going to turn the tide for us right now and we did talk yes we did talk about egregores earlier this is something that i've been interested in and 
writing about for a very long time. I think I, I wrote a book about this, which is faction, as I do like to do sometimes, like I did with the Sunday, called Consolata's Companion, and it was about our shadow self. And I was very interested in this concept of the egregore, which is a thought form. Again, another thing that I'm really interested in that's, that's created by groups of people. When a group of people is to, has been together for long enough, they create a thought form. Mm -hmm. They create a thought form, not in an, in an inorganic way. You could compare it to a meme or you could compare it to a corporation, okay? But an organic thought form is created under any group, and it's all the negativity. It's all mm -hmm. the negativity that comes together, and it ends up driving the group in a very real way. It's separate. It's, it's an entity of its own. Yeah, I yeah. think I think the, I think the thought form of the meme that pervades our community is this idea of interference, right? Mm, okay, yeah. and, and not that it isn't a real thing, but it becomes this because we've all because we've all experienced it. But mm -hmm. what develops around it becomes like this like barrier. Or my friend Danny has an interesting video on the idea of being blocked, right? Mm -hmm. it creates, mm -hmm physical impediment to us being able to do what we want to do or go where we want to go with stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's like what you're talking about. If you have this thing that might even be a real thing. And then there's all this sort of thought form that it, like it's, it's kind of create, it, it's become so big, the thought form that it's actually a physical thing now. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, and absolutely. So, like, it is. We absolutely don't even, it is. like when people, when we talk to people in our community and they say, Oh, I'm being interfered with. A lot of times no one even says, well, what do you mean? What's happening? What is actually happening? We just all assume we know because we've all put so much, like, uh, there's, there's the, the, we, we've all memified that to a sense where we all think we understand what that means. And, and instead of expressing just what's going on in our life and how we're feeling, how whatever's happening is making us feel, we just go, oh, I'm being interfered with. And that becomes, like, the reason why not or the reason we can't or whatever. And it's like um, maybe the interference was put in from something from the outside, but we've done all the work to hold that structure up. Yes. And um, you're talking about the small acts of will that we need to be able to access to evolve, to, to yeah. go forward in our development. And I believe that the, that the block from, from those small acts of will, which actually is also part of magic. Yes. Mm -hmm. The act of will is part of magic. Um, that I think is by the, is being blocked by the internal parasites yeah. to a certain extent, you know, because isn't it uncanny? Isn't it uncanny that, that you can't access enough will to just do the, the simplest next thing, you yeah. know, on, right. on, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. This is a small act of will and a small act of will goes to our magic and that goes to our power. Mm -hmm. And it's being blocked, I think, by the inter this internal infection, parasitic. Now, what you're um, saying right now is resonating so well that I almost feel like yeah. I'm going to throw up. And Randy knows that when I when I when when throw up, I'm going to throw up. With the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this is something that I'm learning from a very old because it's going with a. It's part of the research that I'm doing. It's part of the research that everybody can do. Okay. These things come to us when we need them the most. And right now I'm reading Colin Wilson's book, um, Mind Parasites. Absolutely brilliant freaking book. Absolutely. Is it called Mind brilliant. Parasites or Predator of the Mind? Predator. Okay. Is it, which one is it, Randy? I can go get the, I can go get it off the table and show it. Is it Predator of the Mind or Mind Parasite? I think it's Mind Predator. Anyway, look it up. Colin Wilson. I'm thinking this mind parasite right now. Robert oh. Stanley and I talked about this years ago in yeah. an interview that we did about Colin Wilson. Oh, yeah. Which um, I have this book here. Show it. See that or not. That's Colin Wilson's. This is a big book. This is, is a compendium yeah. of writings that he does on different topics on the occult. Yeah. This I will book. tell you. I'm completely living into this book this book right now. I am probably on my third read through hmm. and Yashka's reading it aloud at night. It that's how important I think that book is. That's how important I think. Maybe we should all read it and reconvene later and do a show on that. We, I think we should actually okay. I think we should really. Um, yeah. And so this, these are the dimensions because you are unaware because you are unaware that they exist. In an internal dimension, for me, this is a new field of study. This is something we need to crack wide open, 
okay, I think we need to crack it wide open because any predator that you don't even know is there. You have to know. And we talk about the infection. We yeah, talk about yeah. the infection and we all talk about, well, where did the infection come from? When did the infection start? You know, and all those sorts of things. And, um, I, you know, I'm led to believe at the moment, and this is evolving, but, you know, I'm led to believe that this 200 to 400 year um, transition that Shane talks about uh, when the Draco who were here turned things over to these sort of quote unquote human stewards, that business. And um, that's when the serious, serious social engineering started. I wonder, I don't know. I wonder, is that when they, is that what happened to the human stewards? Is that why they did what they did? I, you know, this is, we should read this book and we should just hash the hell out of it. I think. I really yeah. do. Okay. When you were talking earlier, before we came on the air, you were talking about how um, the plant, it, it's possible that like this idea that the planets might be inside of each other, like Russian dolls, oh, yeah. like nested. And so they're, they're, they're basically layers. Like I, I've had that thought before that like, as opposed to the planets being balled out there, that are like in a line or going, on, I've thought before mm -hmm. that exactly that they're like the planets are like almost um, metaphors for layers or a layer of density or like a dimension, dimensional kind of thing. And that they, they exist on the outside. And then there's also a parallel for them on the inside. So we have yeah. on the inside, we have like a mercury spot of Venus, uh, whether it's like a area in our body or like a layer, a, a dimension inside of our body. And I think that the, there's different um, uh, layers of consciousness and there, therefore yeah. perhaps different kinds of parasitic consciousness associated with, with each possible layer. Mm -hmm. um, that occurred to me before. I remember I was at, um, I was at a party one time and watching the visual show. I have very interesting experiences with visual shows at the party. <laughs> like, sometimes it feels like they're almost being directed from inside my consciousness. I don't know what's going on, but um, <laughs> there's like a, a, a geometric form on the thing that was like a sort of like a tree of life and, mm -hmm. it, and there was a body behind it. And at each point on the tree of life, there was a planet and it was correlated to different points on your body. And so like, I started to think, well, okay, is that point on our body? And I remember that Saturn was like on a sh the shoulder and okay. I remember I'd gone through a particular period of my life, my sort of development process, awakening, whatever we're calling this, where I had like a lot of unusual shoulder issues and shoulder pain. And um, so uh, if the different sort of consciousnesses or, or parasites or problems with that layer, of, like, if it would sort of manifest itself in that part of the body, like when you're sort of working through that. So I was, spent the whole night at the party thinking about that kind of thing. But the body <laughs> stores trauma. And so if we are being traumatized by some sort of control system or, or consciousness um, from something that is outside of us that has like figured a way possibly through things we internalize, whether they be things we eat or even just thought forms or ideas that we have internalized to a large point. If we're being sort of attacked, it's almost like the, like the receptor for the satellite is in our body in these certain points. And we store that trauma there. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously that, it's stored in our bo body, but sort of perceived in our mind, like in a different way. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about these inner parasites, that's kind of like what I'm thinking about. And I think that, that this whole um, thing is just different layers of our own consciousness and our own mind that we have to work through. And whether it's something, you know, that has been a deliberate, complete attack on us or whether they just had to sort of plant the seeds there and we do a good enough job of sort of, mm -hmm. and because we're not aware of what it is, like, you know, we just, just like we're destroying our own community from within, we destroy ourselves from within once these seeds are planted, we don't understand what they are. That's amazing because, yeah, and because I teach this, 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 what may, you made me think of is this meditation, I, this meditation I teach has to go through the different layers to get mm -hmm. to the body. So yes, Absolutely. Yeah. And this is, this is something that I learned from Gia, uh, Giuliana Conforto, who is uh, an Italian ge um, astrophysicist, and her ideas of uh, the planets almost being, because we have to be able to think about them in a 3D way. It's, it's how we are right now. Well, it, but it's, it's, being it's, inside it's, each other like nesting dolls, yeah. and that what we might consider space around us being fractal, mm -hmm. and so that it's really much closer Mm -hmm. to us than we think it is but the fractal nature of, of our vision 
makes it seem like it's out there, which is good because we need to be able to put it out there to observe it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you put your thoughts out there. You put your ideas out there. Humans yeah. have this internal need to externalize things and to mm -hmm. arrange them in linear fashion so that we can work through it. And mm -hmm. if you even look at the, when you look at like the way they show us how the planets are, they show them in a perfect line and they show it way out there away from us. Right. And so to, yeah. to start to imagine that it's kind of something that's all around us in layers. Yes. And then yes. something that's also within us. And it's almost like our meat sack, our mm -hmm. skin is the, is the barrier, is the, um, what do you call it? Like the um, membrane? membrane? The membrane. membrane yeah. yeah. Between yeah. that. And, and, and so we have to, start, we are actually part of our environment and the environment is part of us. And we have to stop thinking that like our internal experience ends at our skin. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And how that there, I really think that there's a huge, I mean, if you, anyone who pays any attention, I'm extremely observant. And anyone who pays any attention to all of the strange things going on around you, they absolutely mirror all of the strange things going on inside of you. you True. I mean? They totally do. And, and, and sometimes they don't look identical, but if you can like slow yourself down enough or even just like get your, get, stay in your skin long enough to just be like, oh, okay, when I see this, it makes me feel this way. Why, uh, the other, yesterday at work, this kid had a, he burned himself the other day and had this huge blister on his hand. And every time I looked at his blister, it made my legs feel like this really funny way. Like I, almost like they were good, okay, it was bizarre. Every time I saw the blister. I pay attention to little things like that because like, what does that mean actually? Like I don't know, I can't, I haven't figured out what the blister, the blister thing means, but whenever, don't you have that where like you see something, you look at something, you hear someone talk about something and you have a physical response to it. People, oh God, yes, yeah, absolutely. That is telling you how you're, what's going on on the inside is mirroring that thing that you've just been exposed to on the outside. Right, anyway. right. Randy, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been we've been monopolizing the conversation, and Randy's so brilliant on this stuff. Uh oh, he's muted. How'd you get muted, babe? Okay. Uh oh, yeah. let's forget which button I pushed. Which is this? <laughs> well, you, there's so many loaded concepts with all of that, including how we're formulating the so-called shape of our reality. I mean. I don't think right now we have the ability to process the other dimensions that um, are required to understand how this all operates. I mean, you know, some of us have seen it, like in visions and stuff, and it's almost impossible to describe it. It's, we are, in one sense, literally projecting a holographic reality. We're generating it ourselves, but we're doing it through this construct this matrix so it's moderated it's not intense it's not fiery for the most part yeah it's pixelated it's digital it's not intense and fiery mm -hmm. like you're yeah. right it is yeah well um okay so then that brings us does that not bring us to the um eclipse oh yes does that not bring us right there <laughs> that brings us right there yeah this eclipse stuff, um, you know, uh, Randy said, take the uh, stand in the ground that you took. He was right about that. You're on one side or you're on the other side, which is really odd because I hate to think about things like being like that. But on the other hand, you've got AI on one side and you've got or people who are trying to stand for the organic on the other side. And I will always be, as far as I so for, for the foreseeable future, we'll always be somebody who insists that our feet are still on the ground. Our feet are still on an earth that absolutely exists and is living and breathing and all of those things. And that it doesn't matter how many thousands of layers of other things are surrounding us. Yes, matrixes and, you know, uh, computer and program, like you're standing on the deck of this, you know, the holodeck of the start, all that stuff that's actually going on. Our feet are still, our feet are still on, actually on an earth, Sophia, a living, breathing earth. Okay. So having said that, Randy has pointed out that he feels that there's a time that we're actually looking at two different time streams on each side of that eclipse. And I want, I wonder if Randy could say a couple things about that to help me kind of understand what he means by that. Yeah, I think I called it the bifurcation of time on Facebook. Um, well, but Robert Phoenix said this, I think, on our show, 
when he said, you know, there's a world before the eclipse and there's a world after it. We're living in the afterworld right now. We're living in the underworld, the upside down for you Stranger Things fans out there. Mm -hmm. The mirror realities, you know, and what I sensed got from this whole thing was that there was a different trajectory now and that it was far more ambiguous than anybody really wants to reckon with because what happened with the way timelines, they're not lines, they're waves, were interfered with. And, you know, a number of people have said this over the years, including Duncan O'Finian said it repeatedly, the timelines through uh, Project Looking Glass were continuously being hijacked. And so the fallout for that was that eventually Looking Glass failed. It can no longer go forward. And then that brought us into the era of the hyper CERN thing that's going on. This eclipse looked like it was a magnification of the whole CERN thing in kind of a, on a kind of a semi-galactic scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew it went right back to CERN because all of a sudden I was seeing pictures of that um, image of Kali on the side of the Empire State Building again. Where the hell was that coming from? All of a sudden I was seeing Kali everywhere. And I know that went right back to CERN. I know it did. I, mm-hmm. I broke that down one time and I, it absolutely did. So this eclipse has got to be married to CERN in some way. You're right about that. You're absolutely right about that. Anyway. Um, Okay, so one of the okay, so one of the did I did I even come close to answering what you wanted me to answer? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm just really interested in what you see and what your what your um, impression of these two timelines, M. Randy, tell you had such a good post on on Facebook the other day where you kind of talked about the, the the Crowley Moon Child sort of yeah. Yeah. To kind of recreate that for the, the listening audience here, and then I'll yeah. have something to say about it. Well, that kind that. of spins off into the whole ritual thing that we started talking about with Robert. And what happened in 1946 when uh, Parsons, Jack, Jack Burnside yeah. Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard went out and basically did a ritual called the Moonchild, which is effectively the creation of this deity being which ushers in a new age and it's the it's the goddess of the moon so if you look at the timelines there you have jack parsons who started jet propulsion laboratories which became the central hub for nasa take 1947 national security act move forward and watch how rapidly this develops with kennedy saying that we're going to send a person to the moon So the moon was invoked there as an energy. And from that point forward, we were at war with the moon. However, you conceive that. No, I absolutely see you're giving me the chills. And now I'm feeling sick, Emily, because (laughs) part of this. Now we come to the book cover. Yeah. Well, wait, no, we're going to get there too. But but Colin Wilson Wilson. said that that these internal predators draw their energy from that side of the moon. And that's why it never spins. Yeah, that, that side. Of, a lot of people say that side of the moon has a cube on it, right? Also, Saturn. They call it the black cube, right? But a lot mm-hmm. of people say on the far side of the moon, there's a base that mm-hmm. is like a black cube, right? Well, also, if you go look at um, some of Fritz Springmeier's early work, where he talks about mm-hmm. the creation of a moon child, which became something uh, that was part of the MK Ultra programming, part of certain satanic ritual abuse. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've looked into this a lot as far as like my own. Um, situation and what they were trying to do with some of these mm-hmm. children. Uh, I think if a, any of you in the community who are investigating your own background possible with programming, go read. Uh, Fritz Springmeier is a little Christian for my taste and he kind of in some ways went off the rails later, but some of his earlier work where he talks about this is actually like really quite amazing. And uh, you're sitting there reading like, oh yeah, he's talking about me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, but yeah. that would be, you know, if you're performing ritual, then you, you, you want children th- th- you're going to, if anything that you want out here, some kind of moon goddess deity, it has to be grounded in two people here. And so that would be the purpose of creating these kinds of subjects that they were trying to right. create this perfect moon child, right? And if you right. look at sort of, um, you know, I've spoken like a little bit about certain memories I have 
um, it's not, I don't think it's something that is real, but I had this idea in my head from the time I was a child that you could take an elevator to the moon and it was only like 80 <laughs> miles away. Okay. But so Maybe a lot of these things that are tied into our consciousness with yeah. the moon and a lot of us, you know, out here doing some of these things that we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, this goes to what we were talking about earlier. We have to be careful about why are we talking about these things? Why are we thinking about these things? Are we mm -hmm. sort of participating in manifesting some of this moon child matrix kind of stuff? Um, so okay. that was one side of what you talked about, Randy. Finish, kind of finish your thought on what on you know because you were talking about two sides of this. Yeah. Well, basically the nine eleven ritual, which was the yeah. two towers, actually the three towers. Right. One, funny how seven completed a sequence of one and two or zero and one binary triggering mm -hmm. the collapse of the seven. Mm -hmm. um, so 9-11 brought in the corresponding Saturn alignment, which is what accelerated us basically towards this hyper futurism that we're engaging. Uh, that pushed the agenda of CERN forward. It pushed the military industrial intelligence state forward. And as we moved into that block, then we were in this hyper chaos mode. So the eclipse was some sort of time reset from the machine. It was not an organic process at all. And right, anybody that no. watched it knows that I, I watched it through as much protective lenses as I could watch with my eyes. Plus I, I videoed it with a high def camera on my phone. Mm -hmm. My eyes and that phone were not seeing the same things at all. And I have no idea which one is right. Interesting, isn't it? I, 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 what I got from your post, Randy, is that you were kind of saying that sort of the bifurcation, one side is sort of dominated by moon and one side is sort of dominated by Saturn. Mm -hmm. And what, when I saw that, so I, the same day, I think either the same day or the day after he posted that, I also was watching, um, a variety of videos about the whole thing in Las Vegas. And from the collection of things that I, that I looked at, I sort of am playing with this theory in my head that the, if we are on bifurcated timelines, one sort of being dominated by Saturn, one by the moon, not necessarily that one is any better than the other, but necessarily, so, well, I think one might have some more organic elements than the other. I think the Saturn thing is just completely, is that right, Randy? The Saturn one is, is like the complete CERN chaos, all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Well, yeah from okay. what we understand of it, yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So what I was thinking is like, what if somehow we are witnessing a situation where the event occurred on two different timelines differently? Like on one, it was like an actual false flag kind of thing. And on the other, it was like one of these hoax, drill, whatever kinds of things, okay? And that mm -hmm. somehow we are getting reports from both timelines. And the thing that is still tying these timelines together, like the only thing that is holding them together is the way we use the internet and technology. Like what if well, YouTube and Facebook are holding those, like, are, are like, so if we have two different timelines there, but there's like a string that connects them. It's that's why I called it the paradox. Yeah. We are now in a commingled reality stream because of that, because you can't pull all that back, all those threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't make a clean break. You would, that would be the, the equivalent to cutting the spinal cord of the collective. Right. So mm -hmm. the transitions that happen now happen with more rapidity, enough rapidity so that we are now becoming aware of it because it's greatly speeded up. Whereas these shifts mm -hmm. would have been done probably over decades, even maybe centuries, mm -hmm. the, the alignments and the shifts, the, the this weird phenomena of the ocean sucking out mm. and then coming, coming back. back in. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's also going on with the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really low all of a sudden, people are saying, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it's, it's a reset. It's just... Well, uh, yeah, I talked to Maria Wheatley about that. She thinks that the water as a sentient being is actually going into the planet, running away from what's being done to it. And also cleansing because inside yeah. of the earth is yeah. the whole fluidic system of the planet, fresh yeah. and salt water, not differentiated. Mm -hmm. The system mm -hmm. itself is creating this, you know, the whole, yeah. is, is the, the whole concept of gravity, mm. the moon controls the cycles of the sea. Right. That's, 
And the earth is a sentient being taking it as well. Earth is, is, this is what I say about the Fae. The Fae yes. married themselves to the earth, but yeah. the earth also insisted that they come in. Is, yeah. Maria Wheatley, is Maria Wheatley a dowser? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I don't know she's why. A I don't... Master, she's a master dowser, and she's, um, do you know Dennis Wheatley? Do you know that no, name? I, look, I, I, the yeah. only thing I know about Maria Wheatley is what I've heard from you. I'm not really familiar yeah. with her work very much at all, but just for yeah. some reason, like when you were earlier, when you were saying how she was into sacred water, like I got the intuitive hit. She must be a dowser. Mm -hmm. so, okay, she, oh, yeah. yeah. She's a master dowser, as was okay. her father, who was Dennis Wheatley, who was an esotericist of some magnitude. Um, yeah. At some point, I think he was only second to, uh, oh, who was the... Um, mystery writer Ag agatha christie in the uk in terms of sales and things like that but he was also a master dowser and an esotericist and taught her how to douse and now she's one of the guardians uh, she's one of the guardians of avebury she doesn't like you to say that but she is so let me, let me ask this question so you don't have to answer if you don't want to so okay. does she communicate with the fae she has seen them she's seen physical representations of them she looks to my work she looks to my work, which which takes us right into the some of the other stuff we want to talk about. Because I research, I, I put I try to put research in the pages. So there's like three levels or so of what I do with the Fay, and some of it is hard. What what people will consider to be hard scientific research. This is etymology. This is um, megalithic uh, evidence and things like that. Then there is um, the stuff that I can't prove right. i can say right. i know but i have to say i can't demonstrate to you how it is that i know this it's something you understand yes those sorts of things but most of what i put out there is research-based and so she considers my work to be with that just, much more legitimate you know i was just curious if like i, I i've always so we talked once before about um the fan on the show and i asked you if you'd heard of the fairns and i i i, I just am instinctively think but with some some experience to back it that that part of how the fey or the fairns which i think are the same thing mm -hmm. i think they, they communicate through dowsing they communicate in all kinds of natural ways yeah i cannot but this is one of those things if i yeah, yeah. if i say the fey told me okay. right right yeah <laughs> you no. know people are like uh-huh okay right um, but I, but I'm also always finding they're also always giving me things. Now, yep. This is going to lead us into the thing that Randy tr was going to bring up a second ago. But let me get let me get some preamble in about that as well first, because um, I have decided to spend that it's much more important for me right now to spend time manifesting this, these Fay lectures and more data about the Fay and really standing in the in my shoes in that way, because. Everybody's talking about the Fay because it's a big old fad right now. And that Maria brought that to my attention, actually. I wasn't really paying attention. She said, oh, my God, everybody's talking about the Fay right now. What is going on? But they don't have a lot of – and and I thought, well, you know, I, I, I was hesitant to get out there with this because just because of what I said to you, so much of it is unprovable, and, and a lot of it is provable and, and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is everybody's making it all up anyway. They're all making it all up as they go along and making this. Whole but is, thing, is, so. isn't that sort of whatever? You I mean, know, it's a whatever. So I'm going to get out there. Isn't that sort of what reality is? It's like to a certain yeah. extent, we make it up, and then it's our, it's our. Yeah. Can we make so it get out there. anyway? Yeah. I'm going to get out there with my stuff, and here's yeah. one of the main reasons I'm going to get out there with my stuff is because the Fae is not a savior race, no. and I want everybody to get that they are not here to save you. Therefore, you better be listening to what's going on around that because they're not here to save you. They're here to help you remember that you are also one of them. That's what, that's what my next you have about. everything that they have. You have it. You have it. And that has been the entire point of burying us in bullshit to keep us from understanding that we are those people. When, you know, all these cliches, well, you know, we are our own saviors and all that stuff. The reality is that they are not here to save you. They are not bluebirds. They are not nice Dracos. They are not this, that, and the other thing. They are, they are real. They're, they're, they are you. They're, they're you. Yeah, they're, yeah. Okay. And they're just here to, um, 
they're trying to communicate with us because they want us to understand that we're the only ones who can save ourselves. And, and frankly, the time is now. Do you think that's my belief? Time? My belief is that we're at the turn of the tide and the time is now. There's never been a more, and it's because of this damned eclipse. There's never been more, a more important time to take that up. Okay. Do you think, I have a question. Do you think it's possible? Because I agree with you that they're us. You know, do you think it's possible that like, because we talk sometimes about how like we sort of agreed to come in here and have this experience. Are they the part of us that we left outside of this reality, outside of this dimension? Are they, is that, is that like our, mm, maybe Cliff would call it our knowing mind or our highest conscious. Future self. Right, future maybe, self. I, call it future. I think that um, thinking about the world, the dimensions of the world a la Giuliana Conforto helps us understand yeah, a little bit does. better where the fae yeah. are located. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So if we, if we came in and we're sort of in this right here, yeah. and this is yeah. the part of us that sort of is not necessarily outside of that, but can see and understand all this while we're only in that spot that we're in right now. Yeah. And, if, and so the, the communication we have with any of these kinds of things, these things they give you, this, you know, these knowings are just really mm -hmm. us talking to ourselves outside of time because time is one of these constructs that we have to be able to be able to deal with where what, what we're in right now mm -hmm. and that's what it is it isn't the, it isn't yeah. like humans do this thing where they want to turn them into like others they want to make everything other everything if it's other. good or bad or whatever it's other and different than yeah. us and it's really just like yeah. okay there's a lot of us that are becoming aware of the fact that we are more than just our body there's uh, like further knowledge that we have access to and it's just learning to uh by going inward be able to tune into this thing that feels like it's an outward thing right exactly i think that's that they're they're outside and they're inside just like everything else right yeah, yeah. um but i think but let me things. ask you let me ask you this kara mm -hmm. you say they're communicating how do you perceive them as communicating what is their what is their mode it's and what is their just, message it's just an, for one, most of it's an inner knowing for me, okay. for me. Um, and some of us are putting this stuff, writing this stuff down, you know, um, it's it, it, they, anybody, anybody can hear them if they, if they get to the point where they can clear the noise from their brain, you can do it. You don't need anybody else to do it for you. If you can clear the noise, you will hear, you will see, you will see what's inside of you that's the original magician. And that's all the Fae are. They are the original magi magician in you because you're the, you are the descendants in a way. If, you, if we need to think about it that way, we are the descendants of the original of the Fae. Okay. I think that they, I think they also use nature to send messages. Yeah, okay. they do. I think like, I'll, give, I'll, give an, I'll give an example. Okay, so I was on my run. Yes. And, um, it was actually, I think, just after I did the, 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 this bit with you on sugar. And uh, I was um, intentionally communicating with something, right? And there was nothing outside. There was not, like, there was beautiful, sunny, clear day. I, like, but on the path in front of me, there was no squirrels. There was no lizards. There was nothing. There was no birds. Everything was blank, right? I, and I asked, we, we talked about doing a marathon. Mm -hmm, right? We did. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I was asking her... I was asking, um, should I run a marathon? And as soon as I said that, a fire, two fireflies came from right behind me, right on the sides here. Squirrels started running. Lizards started going. <laughs> the bunnies came out, right? Yeah. It was like the confirmation. Kind of, and it was really just me, like, knowing that that's been something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, right? You know, but, yeah. like, okay, this is, like, I'm one of those people, and sometimes it's um, when I have someone to do something with, and so it's also a commitment to another person. It's, it helps me to manifest it in a better way. And you're yeah. like that too. You seem to like to work with other people and whatever. I do. And yeah. So, I do. But that sort of confirmation from nature at that moment, I was totally in sync with nature. And I think that's how you communicate with them. Yeah. Which makes it imperative that we don't lose sight of the organic world around us yeah. as well, as well. This is one of the things. And like I, Shane said this on one of our interviews. He said, you know, right now we're running an AI construct, but there's another one that's waiting. And if we can't get our shit together, get, you know, make this connection, get our own authenticity back before this next uh, AI takes place, 
I saw something Ray Kurzweiler today was saying and by 2045, the singularity would be in place. Well, you know, so this is now's the time. That's his wet now's dream. The time. Yeah, That's tell. Ray Kurzweil's I wet tell. dream, yeah. <laughs> it can't come fast enough for him. I know. So here's how I'm changing things. Randy, just butt in if you need to, but here's how I'm changing the way that I'm working on this stuff. Um, first of all, I'm going back to trying to be very brave. I just changed the cover, which Randy and I, we're all going to talk about the cover I just put on it. Um, and it was an intuition that I needed to change the cover because when I do a lecture, the first thing I do is I say, look, I am definitely need to introduce myself to you and try to explain to you why you care about anything that I have to say. And I, I will do that and I want to do that. But the first thing I need to do is tell you about you. I'm going to tell you who you are. And then I talk about the imagination and I talk about the Fae and I talk about the original magician and how that all of that is the reason that all of this stuff is happening to us. Okay. Then from now on, because people are extraordinarily delicate, have you noticed about their concepts of what the fairy world is? They have beloved beliefs about fairies and they mix up elementals with this, that, you know, that whole, that whole just sort of subconscious world that belongs to the planet is dear to them. It matters to them. Um, and they come to hear me when I'm talking about the Fae and they think that's what I'm going to be talking about. That's not what I'm talking about at all. So I decided that one of the best ways to deal with that was to shove, really shove out there the fact that I'm talking about, a, in my view, a seed race. I'm talking about something that's planetary. Um, and so I selected a cover sort of randomly. I just thought it was a nice cover <laughs> for the new book. And as soon as I put the cover on the new book, my, I mean my husband and everybody said to me, oh my God, what have the Fae got to do with the Saturn moon matrix? And I said, for all I know, absolutely nothing. But that's what the new cover is. Looks like it's got Saturn and the moon. And now I'm thinking about the moon. Can I show the this thing? Or am yeah, I yeah, do it. Do it. Am I going to blow up Emily's uh, computer desktop oh, again? Oh, I hope not. I hope not. This uh, is the new cover for Guardians of Blood and Fire. Randy's got it. Yeah, I got to pull it up here. Okay. And then I want Randy to talk to you guys talk to me about what you see with this cover. Oh, once I can get it shared here. Here we go. Oh, by the way, Maria, I changed the cover. There we go. There it is, gang. The seed race of the Fae on the bottom. The search for the Celtic heart, guardians of blood and fire. I want people to understand I'm not talking about the garden, the fairies at the bottom of their garden. I'm not talking about the undines or the sylphs or any of those amazing, wonderful things. And to confuse the Fae with them is just as much an insult to them as it is to the Fae. Th those things exist and they are um, mighty and pure and wonderful, but they're not the Fae. And I want people to understand that, you know, pictures of fairies is not what you're going to see when I talk about this. So we've been talking about the moon. I've been talking about the predators on one the mind predators on one side of the moon, supposedly, according to Colin Wilson. This whole thing makes a lot of sense. The fact that the moon never spins. If the moon spun, if we got, could get to the other side, they would lose that connection. You guys know a lot more about the Saturn moon matrix than I do. What do you think? And, and Randy said he was talking about this last night as well. Yeah, well, we talked about it in reference to the um, the eclipse, obviously, which I think is what's really interesting about it. The image itself, you could analyze it. You could analyze the whole lunar thing and the Kronos time gate mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of it, which is all in play. You know, I I think the initial impression of the of the cover is that it's kind of a metaphor for something that we're looking at on another another layer mm -hmm. related to the seed race, right. which are outside the construct and how to explain that, how they function. Even in physical space, they function outside of the, they bypass the matrix. Totally. Yes. And we can okay. take 
that's that's the, the evocation that I get from the cover is basically that it's it's a reminder that we can liberate ourselves from this. What do you think, Anne? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, so when I first saw the cover, um, when you said you sent the picture the other day, like well, or earlier, that, that's you know, it's very, it is very powerful. It does evoke a lot of things, and it does. So you know, yeah, I, I guess in some ways people think that it's evoking that because people are very familiar with David Icke and his Saturn and the Matrix, and and there is a level of truth to that. You know what I mean? Um, but I think like we all sort of understand that that's something we've been in, but like we're looking at Saturn and the moon, you know, are, you know, the, these, I, I, they're connected. And it, maybe that is sort of the level that we are at. If we have all of these layers of the planets, both on the outside and the inside, then mm -hmm. you know, we're being controlled from the outside. If we somehow work through that layer on the inside, that's, mm -hmm is connecting ourselves to the seed race. It's not really going to matter how they're trying to manipulate it from the outside. So I think right. like that's what it brings up for me is like, you know, and it's interesting how the ring on the, on the cover, it looks like sort of the ring of Saturn is sort of just spinning, like almost touching the moon, mm -hmm. right? Like the ring kind of goes over just like the top of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. And, right. And it's also, you can't, part of the moon you can't see is the part that Saturn is sort of pushed up against. Um, it is, it is interesting. Like, I think we are, I mean, I think that is, that's the, that's the inner, that's the inner layer we're at right now. I feel, you know, I, whenever I think about any of these things, I feel like, at least for some of us, like we're really close to something. Like I feel yeah, like I know. just mm -hmm. one of these days, one of mm -hmm. us or a group of us together, we're going to trip <laughs> on the end and it's just sort of, um, yeah. You know, like we're in, in some ways it almost scares me. It's like I, sometimes I feel like we could just be days away. You know right. I mean? It's that thing. What I said the other day, somebody's going to ask a question and it's going to be the question and we're just going to hear glass shattering. Yeah. You know, the question that busts it all wide open. It's there. I know there is one. We just, somebody yeah. has to find it. Somebody has to find it. Yeah. Anyway, so that's, yeah, that's the uh, approach I'm taking. I'm rolling this out. On it's the beautiful. 16th of October, we'll yeah. see, how, and we'll see how this goes. I mean, I really, um, I, I, and I, I'll, I, I feel like I need to, um, I'll console people before I bring this to them because they're so attached to these um, stories, I guess. The, to the, they're very much attached to the um, confusion. They're attached to this. This item that's really nothing more than an amalgam of what they want us to believe. Walt Disney and right. you know, Bell and all that stuff. And the fairies at the bottom of your garden, which very well, you know, may, those entities that do exist but have nothing whatsoever to do with the Fae. And that's the biggest pushback I've got constantly. I did a Fae lecture in Australia and I there were tears out there in the audience. People had come down from the you know, from the outback and from nowhere, middle of nowhere in Australia to listen to this American woman talk about the, essentially the elementals. And I can talk about that, but that's not what the Fae are. So anyway, this is really important. We're, we are on the verge, Emily, we're on the verge of putting something together in terms of getting our own authentic, our own authentic mind back. And frankly, listen, people ask me all the time, okay, so who's the predator? Then who's the predator? Who is it? What's at the top? What's what's got us? I I um I le leaned towards saying I AI now. I might say I for sure, but you know what? It doesn't matter. What the predator is is everything we are not. So you figure out who you are. Yeah. yeah. You figure out who you are, and the predator is who you are not. Simple. But you need that little act of will too. That tiny little act of will. That's the big. Yeah. yeah. The tiny little act of will. The, the the little piece of will that is like, even though it'd be really convenient to tell the little white lie right now, not telling the little white lie, even though it'd be really convenient to the, this, you know, whatever. It's that. Anything. Anything. It's those, Get on the treadmill. Those, Get on the yeah. treadmill for thirty seconds. Don't wait till tomorrow. Yeah. You know, those just tiny little bits where you yeah. win. Because every Those time are, when you don't, you're co-conspiring with the predator. You're right. co-conspiring with the thing that you're with the thing that you're not. A absolutely, I think that more we can do. I mean, 
And maybe that's, maybe that's why we're just a few days away. I think for a lot of us who are doing this kind of work, we've whittled away a lot of the own inconsistencies in, in ourselves and the way we do things. And we're down to those few little ones that are that we've put the block around. We've made a, sp a space for interference and put an impediment there. And if we just go, you know what, I'm not going to do that anymore and, and just push that over, then the, whole, the answer will be right there and the whole thing falls. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, so well, that, well, that actually that. kind of feeds back into the whole mind parasite thing. Yeah. And if you go back. Yes, and, absolutely. It does. Uh, we're basically defending against something. And it's like you look at horror movies and you look at the way evil's portrayed. It's not like that, really. The most horrifying thing is this shadow that sits inside of your own consciousness. Mm -hmm. Everything else can be like a huge magnification of that or on some gross level, some representation, but it sits here. It's not out there. It's mm -hmm. here. That's right. That's yeah. right. Wherever That's you right. localize that. Yeah. Right. That's right. And so, yeah. It's kind of the equivalent of, of, of people who make excuses for their abusers. When we don't push that little thing over, it's like we're like oh, providing the excuse for the predator or for the parasite. Like we're providing the excuse and making the reason why it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I really want people to kind of understand that that, uh, wait, what do you mean? The fact that I wouldn't get on the treadmill today. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff, that little act of will that you can't seem to muster. That's what it is. That's what you're, that's what's standing between you and liberty. That's what's standing between you and freedom and authenticity and frankly saving the organic nature yeah. of your reality. And the organic nature of your reality means that you get to go back and be the creator and you're not constantly fighting this copycat pickpocket, you know. <laughs> oh, the pickpockets out there are driving me insane right now. You know, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway, okay, so that's my nine cents, Randy. That's pretty she awesome, actually. She doesn't even have like, a dime, Randy. This, 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 <laughs> like, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, well, this, this is the purpose that was set forth to go upon the treadmill. One doesn't need to do that, so that would end that argument, wouldn't it? And you just go, <laughs> you know what? There's a, there's a hill out there. I think I'll go walk it. And then you go walk the hill and then see if the resistance shows up for that. Now you know where the voice is again. That's right. Sometimes, sometimes we miss purpose. Sometimes we talk ourselves into things that we don't either really shouldn't want to do or that isn't the core issue. You know, it's kind of like I find myself going, well, that may not be the real issue. The real issue may be this. It's don't have the second cupcake. Right. Don't have the 16 ounce of diet soda <laughs> with, you know, the full, full bore chemistry set in it. it it's, uh, there's all, so, you know, we're, we're battling these, these eyes and they, they fracture. It's like shattering a mirror. Each mm -hmm. one is a splinter, but it develops a magnitude of the little yes. eyes. Yeah. So we have to figure that one out. We have yeah. to, um, we have to decide, we have to, we have to observe who's actually making our decisions. Yep. Is our vision our own? Who's driving the bus? If you if if something's fight if you, if something is fighting with you and you can't seem to make yourself do something, do it. Which brings That's us right back to, to where it always brings us to fringe, which we are the observers, right? <laughs> and we actually we have to. That reminds me. This is and <laughs> and step back into reality. <laughs> you brought up. You brought up the, the observers in French. Okay, so I went out and looked at the word egregore. Egregore, yeah. yeah. Egregore? Yeah. Um, it could be anything, it's, really. It's well, but here's what's really interesting is that the word actually renders as watcher out it's of the observe. Greek. So that, that's... That, and the whole thing with the observers with fringe is that it's us in the future who didn't do the acts of will, who took the easy way, who used technology instead of figuring out the things of ourselves with our hearts and our minds and the whole, and you know, the whole, as soon, when, as soon as they would take technology out of their head and become human again, they would stop doing the. <sighs> that, that definition, by the way, came from, uh, it came from a Masonic website, beachons of Masonic really? yeah. light. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's one of the teachings. The observer. So the observer. So the thought forms are us. 
right? The, the, thought, the thought forms are we're, what we're creating. Like we're, instead of like doing the small acts of will, we're creating the possible scenarios of all these problems and then reflecting them back to ourselves with the little eyes that we're watching from and, and manifesting them. And now so, you understand both the genius and the Achilles heel of the AI. Yes. Yeah. It's, all, it's all wrapped in that little conundrum there when you unpack yeah. it a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of why I've said, you warn about AI, but here's the thing. It's not fait accompli. It may not even be at its ultimate penetration possible to do what right. it would do. Right. I think that on a subconscious level, we're always fighting it off anyway, but it's yeah. a battle and a half, man. It's a real yeah. a battle and a half that we aren't, we need to be conscious of that thing, okay? And you talk about this egregorous thought forms and we're talking about the predators in a different dimension of our consciousness or a different mm -hmm. dimension of our mind. So what are we creating with an egregore? What is that? Is this a, an external manifestation of these internal predators that, that drives us? I mean, these are really interesting. These are really interesting esoteric questions. These are magic questions, questions of magic, questions of sorcery. You have sorcerers and you have magicians, and we are the original magicians. We are, because, and the Fae are the original mag magicians, and they're just trying to hand us back our, our magic. That's it. Yeah. Handing us back our magic because the sense, the sense... I get is that if we allow this next AI to come where we become these batteries, we become the matrix, we're the batteries for the matrix, then we are lost to them. We are lost to them, which means what? We're lost to our own magic. We are lost to that thing that makes us more, you know, the earth is the most more valuable than all the other planets put together. That's what, that was a line from Jupiter rising. Yeah? yeah, and I totally get that. I totally believe it, and it's absolutely true, and that's why. That's why. So now's the time, okay? That's why I'm sort of segging into this particular arena, and I must stay there for as long as I feel like it's – as long as I feel like I'm not running a dead end, you know? Yeah. So. Well, if you notice how they've speeded up 5G adoption since the eclipse, it's almost like miraculously yeah. – Projected yeah. targets were out to 2020. Mm -hmm. They're now winding them back. Early rollouts already starting. Well, I, I have a 5G router already. In my, when I move to the new house, that's the only thing they have now is 5G routers. That's the only yeah. thing the cable company so, will give you. So the yeah. thing about this is there is a move forward, and you're not going to roll it back again because there's a level at which we've so electrified the earth. Yeah. That in concert with what's already present in the atmosphere, they'll simply light this thing up and everybody becomes nodes. You know, and that's, that's actually the choice that we have to make now after the eclipse. Because yeah, the a reset... Race. It's a race now. The reset was an admission that their old system was glitching. So I have to believe they did firmware updates on the whole reality stream to mm -hmm. prevent further glitching, and yet mm -hmm. we're still causing them the glitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, I don't believe that there's any safe or desirable way to partially join with AI. No. I know that, that there's, there's some schmear going on out there with, about that nonsense. I don't think that that's... Yeah. Or even what, the acceptable, even what the acceptable limit is, because I think each one of us has to make a decision about this. You have to draw the line in the sand. Yeah, you do. It's better to draw the line in the sand and step back from it gradually than to be forced to pull the plug on something that, quite frankly, probably supports a fair amount of your infrastructure, your ability to function, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a Luddite. I'm not looking to pull the plug on this. I want to roll this back to a safe level. Well, I think right. we have to be the stewards of how it's integrated into what we do. But to me, you know, that is a different thing than having it be integrated into your body. Or into well, your... that is the point of no trespass. Right. You know, which is the core issue with the vaccines. The vaccines, for whatever else they are, are a pretext to allow us to continue yeah. to invade our bodies yeah. subcutaneously, intravenously, and otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and and also with with the uh, additives to food, same thing. It's a, uh, well, it's, a yeah. it's, yeah. it's it's willing consent to to consume the technology. You know what I mean? Right. To consume or to, to consume the um, the things that 
uh, help to create the environment that supports the technology in the body. Right, exactly. So, okay. So anyway, I want to make that clear as well. I don't think that we should um, willingly say, oh, this far and no further, um, or this far is okay, because, because I think that some people are, my sense is that some people are putting that line far, far, far away from what's really okay. Yeah. You know, and yeah. once you're, once you're hooked in, it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to get unhooked. This shit's not going to go away just because you maintain your own organic integrity. Right. It'll still be there. You don't have to worry that, you know, oh my God, if I don't, if I'm not like completely plugged into that, it will be gone when I wake up. No. Well, we've been warned true. about this for 70 years. Yeah. You know, go back and read Ray Bradbury. Go back and read Asimov. Yeah. The, yeah. Go read Isaac Asimov and the laws of robots and yeah. understand that they were warning us about this long before we actually right. began to realize right. the technology. I, I think actually, I think we, we need to probably roll things. I, I think we've probably let some things come a little too closer to, like, too, too close to us. Like, I think like one of the things I talk about with some of my friends when we're sort of envisioning what we're, where we're trying to go, we're talking about the ideas of in creating intentional communities. And on that community, there be one building or one area. And that is where the technology mm -hmm. is. And that has is built in a certain way that that's where that's where all the technology right. is, and we don't sleep near there. Like where right. we sleep, where we consume our food and where we actually live our lives is away from that technology. And when we have to, when we want to go make a podcast or we have to take care of our you know check check our fake post, check Facebook or do our thing, we go to a specific place to use the technology rather than bringing the technology into our home. Well, the design from the beginning with the internet going back to the eighties was articulated as being ubiquitous. That means it's everywhere. Right. Yeah. So effectively, there are places you can avoid it. Caves work really well. Um, <laughs> certain underground, certain underground facilities seem to be fairly able to screen that shit. Other than yeah. that, you know, you can't even get in your car now and not be bombed right. with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all this other. Right. EMF well, crap. I, I think it's going to take some people choosing to like have to un, kind of un, un, obviously we can't unwind it completely. They're trying to have it no. so it's operating the air all around us all the time. But we can yeah. consciously roll back a few things. Like there isn't like I was listening and I'm guilty of this too. But I was listening to something this morning where the guy was talking about yeah I sleep with my laptop next to me. I'm like we don't like like no we, we need to stop doing. It. <laughs> like I've we've all done that. We've all fallen asleep watching a movie on Netflix. Some of us or whatever. But like. No, I'm starting to try and put the technology further and farther away from me when I'm sleeping. I unplug the router. I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't even want to have my phone in my room. I'm trying to get an old fashioned alarm clock because. Yeah, we don't do that either. I, that's I, I, I'm to the point where I can tell the difference between an inserted dream and a dream that is an organic dream. And you know what I mean? And the nights I have inserted dreams are usually when I've forgotten to unplug the router or when I've fallen asleep with the phone too close to the bed or something like that. And there's something going on. It's a, it's a complete, it's different. Well, isn't it? I'll tell you what, I'll go, I'll go a whole several 17 steps farther than that. You guys, I don't think we need any of that. I think we can do it all ourselves. Yeah. No, I, that's I, what we need to remember. Yeah. It's all the dim copy of the capacities and, and talents and, and yeah. skills that we already have. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, no. uh, we don't really need any of it. No, but no, no. we got to get there. We have to, I, I think just like we got here in a series of steps, we're going to, you know, we're going to have to undo it in a series of steps. If for no yeah. other reason than because we, as humans, do have that fear of, oh my God, if I just cut, yeah, probably yeah, if yeah. we and, all just cut it off, just, we'd, figure, we'd figure it out real fast, but we all operate under that fear of, the, of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And Randy's right. I mean, it does support our infrastructure right now. And belief systems are extraordinarily powerful in this, in this plane, on this dimension. And uh, we have to be mindful of that because we can actually end our physical because we are so bought into something we talk about yeah. that when we talk about food you know yeah anyway that's nine my nine cent my 90 cents um oh she's gone from nine to 90. 90 <laughs> that's my 900 dollar she's got 80, 81 more cents man i want to make sure that everybody knows there's a new edition of dangerous imagination out there by the way second edition really big new chapters on um the vatican i actually call it the Cusa fiction C R U C I dash F I C T I O N. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also a massive part on the psychiatric industry, which was actually a continuation of the Inquisition. 
Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, lots of tools of the Inquisition trade um, were and still are used. Do you know the guy who invented the lobotomy? <laughs> Wait for this. The guy who invented the lobotomy actually then got himself a, a van. He called it the lobotomobile. And he drove around the country giving on-site lobotomies for a long time. Great. <laughs> Buy it now. <laughs> hold it up there. Anyway. Hold it. Hold it up there. Hold the cover yeah, up. Okay. Come on, let's see it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So this is the new. This is the new cover. Yeah, <laughs> that's an addition. Oh, is that it now upside, upside down, Kara? Okay. Was that, I thought it was upside down before. No, that's yeah. why I laughed. You're I'm a you. no goddess. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Laughed, Dangerous baby. imaginations. Yes, I am. Yeah, Back this in is uh, six hundred pages, baby. Um. The one thing I wish was in there that isn't, and I will probably write it as an episode, is that I believe that it is, also believe that it is critical. Oh, my battery's going, Randy. Oh. I also believe it's critical that the that this planet be recovered in hemp. I believe that. I Absolutely. believe that all my heart. Yeah, and that's and part I, of the social and engineering. Touch base on this, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be an episode along with nutrition. Anyway, if I die, I had like, has this been a three hour interview? Because I have like three no. hours. We, we go on <laughs> We've been recording for just about almost two hours. Yeah. Okay. All right. We were base. kibbutzing before that. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. Kibbutzing. So. Kibbutzing. We do that. We do that. <laughs> that was an Israeli term. Yeah. I've been, like, I've been compromised by the Mossad. I do oh, everything oh, I can yeah, to not kibbutz. Now. Right? now you're making me kibbutz with two years. Yeah. I, know, <laughs> I can I feel hear you. it now. I can hear it now. But anyway, thank you because I really did. We haven't. I haven't been on in a while. Yeah. And um, I'm really freaking serious about this next step thing. I mean, I'm really serious about this. I am, I, I am driven. I'm compelled to, to do this. Um, so off we go. You know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to record the next Faye lecture and I'm going to run it by a few key people to see what they think, Randy, and I'm being a few of them. Um, because I want to, I mean, this really just has to, to be as good as it can be mm, and yeah. as informed as it can be. It's that important. It's now the turn of the tide. It's now guys. It's now. It's now. now. Yep. Yep. This is the apocalypse folks. This is, uh, this is it. We're turnkey. Yep. We're on the pivot. Yep. The world after the eclipse, anything else we want to. Well, I just want to say one thing. If there involves a, a monster and a savior, it's not real. Yeah. Run so, the, yes. Go the other direction. That's Draco yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. All right, King. Hey, the truth is out there. It's inside you. This is Off Planet TV and with Emily Moyer, myself, and our very special guest, Kara St. Louis. We'll be back with another show very soon. Thanks, guys. Thank My you. computer's dying. Bye. This is Off Planet Radio.